to get started? Sure. I'd like to call the joint MOSAC and TAC meeting of Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021 to order. We'll begin with a roll call to assure quorum for both committees. Susan, please take the roll. Thank you. I will start with the MOSAC committee. And when I call your name, please say here. Uh, Wendy Wolf. Here. Jeff Berg. Here. Sandy Berman. Mark DeLayden. Here. John Gleason. Here. Valerie Grover. Here. Annika Bankston. Mike Wang. Bill Klein. Here. Brad Larson. Here. Susan Morris. Catherine Neuschler. I'm here. Michael Robinson. Patrick Shea. Jamie Sherbin. Here. Thank you. Lisa Volbrecht. Kevin Watson. Antonio West Hafner. Here. Thank you. I will now move on to the TAC membership. Mark Maloney. Here. Scott Anderson. Here. Kristen Asher. John Dustman. Here. Robert Ellis. Here. You, Dale Fallen. Here. Jason Meckel. Crystal, and forgive me. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Crystal oh. Ng. Here. Matt Som. Yes, I'm here. Jim Stark. Here. Jamie Wallerstadt. Bruce Westby. Jim Westerman. Ray Wolo. Here. Thank you. We had a couple people come in while you were taking the roll. Okay, I'll scroll back up. So Sandeep, did you join? Annika? Here. Mike Wang? I'm here. Thank you. Susan Morris? Mike Robinson? Patrick Shea? Lisa Volbrecht? Kevin Watson? Okay, I'll go back through the TAC membership <laughs> last time. Kristen Asher. I'm here. Jason Meckel. Jamie Wallerstedt. Bruce Westby. Jim Westerman. Okay, thank you everyone. I didn't mark those down. Do we have a quorum in both? Uh, because we're not voting for anything a quorum may not be necessary. I just is wanted correct? to know. Yeah, is that correct, Lisa? You're asking if we have a quorum? Yeah, do we need a quorum if we're not voting on anything? We shouldn't, no, but I think we do have a quorum I, in terms of numbers. Let me double check MOSAC. MOSAC quorum is nine, and I believe, and we have 12. 
and TAC membership has 10. So yes, I believe we have quorum for both. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Governor Waltz has declared a peacetime emergency in response to COVID-19 and the Metropolitan Council Chair has determined that it's not practical or prudent to conduct an in-person Metropolitan Council meeting for reasons stated in the governor's emergency ex executive order. Accordingly, Metropolitan Council members will participate in this meeting, or actually MOSAC and TAC members. Um, let's see, where, do, where was I at? Via telephone or other electronic means, and the meeting will be conducted under Minnesota statute section 13D.021. Um, the meeting will be streamed live and recorded we encourage you to monitor the meeting remotely. If you have comments, I encourage members of the public to email us at public.info at metc.state.mn.us and we will respond to your comments in a timely manner. Okay, so now we've gone through the, the uh, required statement for a, a remote meeting. Next up would be the approval of the agenda and it, we'll do that by consensus. If anybody has any concerns that they don't think that they're, they want to change the agenda in some way, speak up now. Otherwise, we'll consider the agenda approved. Anyone? Not seeing anyone jumping at the chance. We'll go with the agenda. Thank you. So our primary purpose today is to review the proposed 2021-2022 work plan and introduce a tool to support future meetings. Um, we're going to first hear from a presentation from Council Water Supply Planning Staff Person Lanya Ross and Emily Steinweg about the work plan. So go ahead, Lanya and Emily. Hi, thank you all. Um, I'm just going to do a quick check. You can hear me all right? This is Lanya Ross speaking. Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Great. Um, I'm going to take the lead on this presentation and tap Emily, uh, particularly if you have any questions, she's really been a big part of uh, the process to develop this work plan and participated in the interviews with several of you. So uh, she's a resource we can draw on. Um, and I apologize, I don't have video functioning today, so you don't get to see my flamboyant gestures, but I think you'll all survive. Um, I want to start just by kind of regrounding in the responsibilities of MOSAC and TAC because that really shapes how we're approaching this proposed work plan. And I also want to encourage you before we get started, if you haven't opened the link to the memo for the work plan, it might be useful just to have that open to refer to. That's much more detailed, and so that might be uh, good information to digest. Um, so. That link is on uh, the MOSAC webpage and came to you as part of your invitation. Um, so this work plan is really focused on uh, MOSAC's responsibility to assist the council in its broad water supply planning work. So what you've been doing for uh, over a decade now. Um, and so it's really leveraging your assistance uh, to focus on developing a report with MOSACs for recommendations. And uh, that leverages the Technical Advisory Committee and their responsibility to inform MOSACs work. Uh, so we'll be asking you committee members to be providing your scientific and engineering um, and local water supply system expertise to these topics. Uh, next slide. Just to uh, make sure that you know the, the memo I'm talking about. Um, I put up a little image. So this is the document that I encourage you to open if you haven't yet. Um, but specifically today, uh, the request to you committee members is to review this proposed work plan and then uh, share your reactions, provide input, because this is going to be uh, shaping the direction of our work through 2021 and then into uh, 2022. Next slide. So the, the goal of this proposed work plan is that by 2022, 
MOSAC, with the assistance of TAC, will produce a set of recommendations and supporting information around high level, high priority water supply topics, um, as seen from your perspectives. And that is going to support the update of the Metropolitan Council's Regional Development Guide and the related policy plans. Uh, so that is part of the, the 10 year cycle of policy and, and local plan updates. So this work we're gonna be work focusing on this year is really gonna provide a sound foundation for the council's thinking and our partners about regional water supply issues. So the reason uh, we're putting together this report is so that policymakers, other influencers, you in your committees and in your organizations uh, are gonna be better informed to help develop and implement policies ensuring the sustainable water supply for the region, our overarching master water supply plan goal. So these recommendations uh, kind of being surfaced throughout the next year uh, might include uh, technical study recommendations, recommendations for policy updates, um, recommendations for new or ongoing collaboration on different topics, and even funding recommendations. And that's all within the scope of the statutory responsibility for the council and water supply planning. Um, if you want a sense of specifically what that might look like or what your recommendations can lead to, if you haven't yet uh, looked at the details in the Metropolitan Council's recent 2020 report to the legislature, um, I encourage you to do that. We summarized all the work that's been done in the water supply uh, area from 2005 to 2020. And that has been uh, directly out of conversations with MOSAC over that time period and with TAC. So those are the kinds of projects, the type of work that comes out of these recommendations, as well as informing these policy plan updates. Next slide. So I just wanted to uh, remind you too what the process was to develop this proposed work plan. Uh, you've seen a version of this graphic at a, the last meeting we had, uh, but this was really uh, drafted, Emily Steinweg, Ali Alhassan, me uh, with Wendy, Mark, uh, Lisa Thompson, Sam Paskey, um, and several of you. So we started by building on the work that had already been done in past years. Um, master water supply plan priorities we heard in previous meetings, conversations we've had with sub-regional work groups, and said, here's the different ideas that have been identified. And then over the past year, we set up some interviews with several of you to say, of this information that people are interested in, what do you see as a priority? So we had conversations about what some of the priority water supply issues are for you. So we met with MOSAC members, digested and analyzed the data, then went and had conversations with several TAC members, again, compiled all that information together with MOSAC, had conversations with both Wendy, Mark, and Met Council staff, and that is what is seeding this uh, proposed work plan. So we're sort of in the dotted black line area here, and that is committee meetings to address those priorities and produce some uh, recommendations for uh, shared priorities and interests. Next slide. So this is a uh, table is just a summary of the more detailed information in the work plan memo, but I just wanted to give you a high level sense of what we're proposing. Uh, kicking off this work today, um, making any tweaks that uh, we need to, but we propose then to spend the bulk of the rest of 2021, digging into uh, topics and recommendations in these four general areas. Um, talking about contamination, water quality in April and May. Looking at the intersection of land use and water supply, uh, source water protection is an example, in June and July. Then tackling groundwater and surface water interaction, and there's some technical information and, and water cycle uh, scenarios that might come into conversation there. That would be August and September. And then uh, discussing some infrastructure challenges. And that would be in October 
and November. Uh, we don't want this work to, it's not just going to be your responsibility and housed in these committees, but we know that there is uh, some broader perspectives we need to connect into this. So the sub-regional water supply work groups will be uh, engaged in different ways. We are proposing a uh, sort of forum of all the sub-regional work groups in December to bring together MOSAC, TAC, those sub-regional work groups, and have a conversation about these draft recommendations, check in, see where shared priorities are. Um, and the goal is to have MOSAC approval of this report January 18th in 2022. And that report then is going to go to the Metropolitan Council and to the legislature. So that's the statutorily uh, defined audiences for this report, but it's gonna be of a broad interest, I think to um, more entities than just that. Uh, and that's where moving into 2022, uh, We'll check in and, and add more detail to that part of this work plan, but there will be a component of outreach and engagement around the recommendations in this report. Next slide. I just wanted to provide an outline of, at these meetings in these topic areas, what we're hoping to leave with. And this would be the goal of creating some draft policy recommendations where we have some conversation and clarify the problem or the need in that area. Uh, work on a shared policy statement along the lines of MOSAC recommends that the Metropolitan Council or the legislature or fellow committee member organizations, et cetera, do something to achieve a specific goal. So that's the rough format we're gonna be building and to identify some, spe some specific solutions or tactics. So it may be that there's a research or an education project that would add a lot of value. Uh, maybe there's a recommendation for a changing uh, planning or regulatory requirements or expectations. Uh, there may be a technology or process change that makes sense to promote or financial support. Um, a new or expanded grant program, for example, might be a recommendation. But we're not starting from scratch, so we aren't just going to come to you with a blank, um, here's an outline, how are we going to fill this in? <laughs> we're really building on the rich, rich information that you have already been sharing with us and we've been listening to over the past years, also building on some of the other work that's being done, again, in sub-regional work groups, in some internal conversations with water resource staff at the council. So uh, next slide. The wording here is hard to read, but this is included in the technical memo. So you can see some of the comments that we've heard from different committee members that provide examples of uh, what we might, how we might describe some of the problems, uh, what opportunities we see, and what are some specific solutions that we can consider. So we'll be mining this information to bring to the committees some drafts to consider for conversation at those TAC meetings in 2021. I threw a lot of information at you. Uh, my goal was to kind of provide an overview of our process, the general timeline and, and topic areas. And I want to stress that this is um, going to be built on um, information and priorities that, that you and other local partners have shared. But that's a lot, so I'm going to stop, and I want to open this up for your reactions, your questions, uh, your suggestions, any concerns, or, aha, that really works for me. So I, Susan, I know, will help watch the chat, and Wendy as well. Yes, thank you very much. At this time, anybody that has questions, feel free to raise your hand. We'll call on you in the order that you raised your hand and our first question is from committee member Larson. Yeah, thank you. So um, could you go into a little more detail if there's things that we have questions about or items that we're interested in is, are those um, to be brought up at the next couple of meetings to be discussed about possibly adding to the work plan? 
or how does the work plan get amended? Could you go into more detail about that? Good. My mute just hit right. No, well, that's a good question. Um, if you have some specific suggestions now, now is the time for us to make some shifts. So I would I would encourage you to to share your thoughts with the group. Yeah. Um, so yeah. can I go ahead and jump in, Lanya? Please. Yep. So I'm the city administrator for the city of Savage, and we partner with the city of Burnsville to get our drinking water, and we do that to protect some unique, sensitive natural areas here in the city of Savage. We have a boiling spring and we have the Savage Fen. Um, so that's why we're partnering with the city of Burnsville. We get our water from the Kramer Quarry, and that quarry is bordered by two landfills, one that's lined, one that's not lined. And there was a report that came out last week, it was in the paper uh, this weekend, stating that the unlined landfill, that's the freeway landfill, was uh, leaking PFAS, or the forever chemical, as they like to call it in the article. Um, I was wondering if that is something that could be looked at with, within the MOSAC work plan. Thank you for raising that. Um, yes, I think that that is exactly the kind of top, or it's an example of the kind of topic that this work plan was based on. And as, as I'm looking at the work plan, uh, the two places that I see that fitting would be helping to shape our conversation and our approach to the water quality and contamination challenge. Um, as we talked with committee members and staff, uh, the, the topic of, of water quality and contamination can be interpreted as what are some specific things we think we need to have an approach to, PFAS or chloride, nitrates. Another uh, way of thinking about it was we know that there's going to be unexpected contamination appearing. Um, can we do some work and make some recommendations to clarify what our roles should be or how we might approach coming together to scope a response to contamination, regardless of what it is, what partnerships uh, would be helpful, um, what kind of information do we wanna have beforehand because that helps us be more responsive. So I would, what, the way that you described this to me, makes a really nice case study of, you know, here's a, here's a challenge. What were some tools that we had in place that helped us respond well, are helping us respond well to this challenge? What are things that have really, that we're struggling with and we wish we had for a challenge like this? And then are, does that help clarify maybe some recommendations we can make to the council, to the legislature, to others, to reduce those challenges or to increase the helpful tools. Um, so that might be one way we could approach that. Um, so that was just me and, and my response. How does... Well, yeah, I was wondering if maybe we're just really learning about this this week. We're only on Tuesday. We read about this over the weekend. Um, I think what you said is is just fine I wonder if uh, maybe Burnsville and Savage get together and kind of discuss things. And um, we might reach out to you for further advice, but it's something that um, is affecting other communities, not just Burnsville and Savage. There's other landfills around here that have uh, PFAFs that are mm -hmm. leaching out. And so um, one of the things that we understand is obviously this is a municipal water source and it's next to landfill. So we're testing for uh, dozens, if not hundreds of different constituents that uh, may potentially get into the water source. So we're testing for those, but as I understand it, PFAFs was not one of those. So just adding that to the regimen of testing may be beneficial, but I would like to talk to them and get back to you. Thank, yes, thank you. And I will follow up as well. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Next up is committee member Neuschler and then Chair Maloney. 
Uh, hey, Lanya, I was actually w w wondering if you could put back up the slide that kind of has the policy, like the framing of the policy recommendation kind of thing. Okay, that was slide six. So, this yeah, one? okay, yes, that that's just helpful. To, to me in terms of seeing sort of like what what the framing is going to be for, for this. Um, and I just was gonna add two things sort of following up on um, uh, the comment that, that just happened. If, if people are interested in, in water quality for PFAS, um, the PCA just released what we call a PFAS blueprint. And we kind of, what we were trying to do was to give a description of the challenge of PFAS sort of in the context of the world of PFAS. And so there's a lot in there and they're in different ways. Um, there's sort of 10 different issue areas that are covered. Um, and I put the link in the chat if people are interested in, in that. Um, and we are also, just so folks know, the Pollution Control Agency, we are starting to work on revising what um, we call our class one water quality standards, which is our water quality standards for waters that are sources of drinking water. Um, and, and we're also thinking about how do we make sure we're covering, um, you know, surface waters that are impacting groundwater. And so that, those are some policy things that are on our minds are what's contained in that PFAS blueprint and also how to do those water quality standards. And those are things that if anyone is, is interested in, in us bringing some information onto the committee in the future to help, you know, whether there's recommendations maybe to, to us in this framework or something, um, I would be happy to bring some of that. And I see uh, there's a question about the PFAS and landfills report. I will find that and I will stick that in the chat too. Thank you for, thank you for that response. And it's, um, we can leave this, slide up too as we think through the work plan. Um, but I, I do think that the, the recommendations, and I'm hoping out of the committee conversations, there may be some specific recommendations uh, for the council, again, the legislature, but if there are suggestions and opportunities to share ideas, um, just that's always been a strength of these committees, sharing ideas amongst each other, uh, that's always something will also add value to this effort. Yeah, this is Susan. I just wanted to acknowledge that in addition to the link, um, Committee Member Neuschler posted, um, there is also the full website link in our chat. We'll make sure we put uh, pull that into the minutes from today. So I just wanted to confirm that. And Chair Maloney, did you have a comment? Uh, I did not. Okay, thank you. Um, Ali, staff member Ali Al Hassan, you're up next. Um, just Lania in the same presentation, if you can go to the schedule, and I guess this is in, in response to the question from, from Savage. And that would be slide five. So, uh, I think thanks a lot for raising this issue. I, I know that PFAS is an emerging issue for state agencies, for all water suppliers who are dealing with this. Uh, one of the first topics that will be addressed is contamination and water quality. So I think in that in that uh, meeting, uh, which is going to be two meetings, actually TAC and MOSAC, these issues could be discussed in more details. And it will be very helpful if after your meeting with uh, Burnsville, uh, Mr. Larson, if you can uh, provide us with exactly what information you need and, and what discussion you want to bring to the both TAC and MOSAC. I think that would be very helpful to fit very well within this first uh, topic that we are gonna uh, start discussing with uh, members of the committees. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ali. Um, yes, I will be drafting some materials and I'll work, reach out to, to Brad and others too to prepare that draft for the TAC and then the MOSAC meetings. I appreciate that. Yeah, so we have a number of links in the chat. We will be sure to pull those into the notes for today as well. 
And at this time, I do not see any other hands raised. Are there any other questions? We have a little bit of time and I know some of you are, well, I'm sorry. I know all of you are incredibly busy and <laughs> may not have had time to really delve into this work plan. So I'm actually going to sit here and stall a little bit just to give everybody a chance to flip through that document. Um, and I'm particularly interested, I, I've definitely worked with many of you for a long time now, and those who I have not yet gotten to know will learn about me, that I am completely comfortable taking some criticism. So if there is anything here that is a red flag for you or gives you heartburn, please feel free to share that because uh, that usually means there's something kind of that really needs to be clarified or there's a question there. So I always interpret that as positive feedback. And this is Chair Wolf. I'm known for having a thick skin as well. <laughs> so feel free to say what's on your mind. And also this work plan is going to evolve as new information becomes available. And, and so there will be opportunities throughout the work plan to uh, it, you know, if you think of something that needs to go into one of these topics, um, you can you can add that at a later time too. Madam Chair, yes. Um, I'm sorry. For some reason, I can't find my my hand to raise. Uh, That's this okay. is Mark. This is Mark Delighton. I'm commissioner from Wright County. Um, one of the things that I noticed on these work plans are a lot of questions and statements and concerns is the chlorides that are being used on the roads. Um, I know that there's been some education going along with that. Um, I know the people of Minnesota like their uh, perfect winter roads. Um, how, how do you think that this can be addressed for the future? Additional education, um, making sure that all the different departments have the equipment so that they use the least amount of uh, chlorides in order to protect the roads or protect the drivers, I should say. But having people stop driving, um, <laughs> I, and, and that's not, not going to happen for me, I'll tell you. i got a four-wheel drive. So. <laughs> Maybe that's what we need to do is get everybody four-wheel drives, and then we don't need to keep the roads quite as clean. See, well, that, there have been a lot of efforts on that front going on lately and the other emerging issue is water softeners because they use a lot of salt and old water softeners use a ton of salt where new ones are a little more nuanced in their treatment and don't use as much so there's a couple of avenues there on chlorides um, is that going to be part of the contamination and water quality Lanya? Chloride has definitely come up in multiple ways. Um, so I, I think having a conversation about chlorides will be a, a good conversation to have. I don't know if the committees will come out with specific recommendations about chloride, but it may be that there's um, recommendations for strengthening some of the work that's being done. Um, chloride is, for those of you who, who haven't made the wastewater connection, chloride is also a particular issue for the Met Council because of our role in wastewater treatment, which ends up being very high in chlorides, uh, and also our stormwater management with the runoff from the roads and in drinking water related to the softeners. So it's an issue that really spans um, the full water cycle. And that's, I think, why it is of interest. Um, So I am jotting notes here to think about how we might create some good committee discussion around this topic that um, provides us information about how we want to think and approach chloride, but also that might help us think about how we want to approach um, managing across the water cycle as well. So Thank I'm you. hearing interested in chloride, so I've got that noted down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lania. At this time, committee member Anderson, has his hand raised. Thank you. I just had a quick question. Lonnie, could you talk about, um, and if I missed it, I apologize, but you know, we just recently met 
uh, the West Metro Water Supply Group and had some discussions about uh, wellhead planning. Does that fit into this, or or how how does that fit into this, especially you know with the the land use intersection question and and probably the contamination and water quality piece. Thank you for raising that question. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we are working on a pilot project with communities in the West Metro and the Department of Health to explore uh, a multi-community approach to wellhead protection in parts of the Metro where drinking water supply management areas from one community overlap with another community. So how can we uh, coordinate better and have more consistent understanding of vulnerability. And uh, I think given the importance of source water protection and given the interest in uh, collaboration with our, the council's land use advisory committee and source water protection, that was identified as a, a shared interest there. And given the great work that's being done in the West Metro, I definitely see uh, exploring new approaches to source water protection being part of the discussion I think it probably fits best in this current structure in the intersection of land use and water supply. Um, but I think that could be a very fruitful conversation to have in a region-wide committee like Moss and Tech. Committee members that um, you can get, get, uh, speak up and ask that for that opportunity to speak rather than put things in the chat because we're supposed to reserve chat for technical things and if you need to put a link for the for the minutes and whatnot. But um, I would urge uh, Jim Stark to say his comments out loud. Sure. Thanks, everybody. This is Jim Stark. I work for the Legislative Water Policy Committee. Just to mention, just to follow up on chlorides, um, there are several bills that have been introduced in the legislature this year that relate to um, training of chloride applicators, particularly um, commercial and residential properties. Uh, much of that training is uh, available in the metro from the MPCA, and that's really good. It needs to be expanded. And then also dealing with the issue of uh, uh, water softeners that uh, that are timed and use more salt in the process than uh, they need to. So, so there's work going on. It's uh, the members of the legislature are aware, and uh, we'll see how they travel this year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ali, you had your hand raised. And you have lowered it. Did you have a comment or are you good? I'm sorry, I forget to unmute myself. Sorry again. So uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. Uh, I'm just in response to the question that's raised by Scott. Uh, the effort in the West Metro is, is again, it's in, 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 its early, um, in, in its early stages and we are working together to address some issues related to well head protection planning, especially in areas where the well head protection area is outside the jurisdiction, the political jurisdiction of the community. And these are some of the issues that a lot of, many of the communities in the West Metro they are seeing, and they wanted to address that. Um, how is that fitting? It's fitting again in, we can fit it under the contamination and water quality. Also, we can fit it under the intersection of land use and water supply. So just as as a way of thinking about these topics, these topics are not exclusive to a specific topic in this area, but some of these can, some of the topics that you are raising could be uh, expanded or addressed in more than one location of those meetings. It's, uh, there is infrastructure related to uh, contamination and water quality. Uh, there is also groundwater surface water interaction when we are th thinking about contamination and water quality. So. Uh, I hope that we're not think thinking about these topics in silos a lot. We try to put this in this way just to make it easier for all of us to 
uh, to focus and 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 converge on kind of some of these, you know, just to follow the 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 the, the template that Lania put for how we are trying to address these recommendations. We just wanted to have them into those specific topics, but a lot of the topics that we are dealing with in day to day, or you are dealing with in day to day life, they can be under each one of these, and we can address them under each one of those. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, Ali. Is there anybody else who has comments or questions? I do not see any hands raised at this time. Lanya, do you want to keep stalling or shall we move on to the next thing? <laughs> I, um, you know, I'm, I want to stall just a little bit because I do okay. want to have a quick check-in with these committees, uh, right? Uh, MOSAC and TAC are advisory committees to the council. So part of this work is going to be from your perspective, what can the council do better to help you achieve your goals in terms of response to chloride or wildlife protection. So, you know, we want to think about, you know, really targeting the council, me, <laughs> my colleagues. Um, but I'm also hearing, you know, some some really great uh, discussion about um, recommendations for, you know, partnerships among the cities, so city to city. So the council kind of helping to maybe facilitate that, but the real work is maybe focused on the city area or programs at PCA. And so I just wanted to maybe pull the group to get a sense when we're thinking about um, drafting recommendations, my bias being a council employee is to focus on recommendations that would have some you know, clear applicability to the council's uh, responsibility and authorities and identify who some good partners are. But if you would like us to broaden that and provide space for recommendations to other committee organizations. Um, that'll be good for me to know as we think about how to design these meetings and then the group discussions around these topics. Is there, does anybody have a strong opinion one way or the other about that? Mike just gave a thumbs up. If you don't have the, if you're not seeing that on your screen, um, I think, I mean, this is an opportunity where we have some of the agencies available to work with them and the council can't do everything by itself. So, you know, things that we, that the, the agencies that are, are part of this um, can do with us, I think are, are great opportunities. And there are some things that end up starting in the Metro and then filtering out to the rest of the state like the the chloride application for for uh parking lots and such that kind of rose up in the metro and is now being talked about spreading elsewhere so i wouldn't want to restrict just to the council personally this is wendy by the way thank you chair maloney you have your hand raised uh thank you um i i just wanted to kind of throw it out there that one of the real ways that the Met Council can add value in this topic, especially as a non-regulator, is in the role of kind of a convener. Um, we're finding that just simply the Met Council having uh, having meetings that bring local governments together, either in the regional work groups or um, on the, along the lines of water efficiency grants or, or things like that, has tremendous value because um, I think it's been stated somewhere in the materials that uh, maybe a comment was made by one of our members, either Mossack or TAC, that water doesn't um, observe jurisdictional boundaries. And so a regional perspective to some of these topics um, is a good foundation, I think, for cities. Because if you go city by city, you know, we can all have different perspectives about topics. But um, I think one of the real values that the Met Council can add or, or can the value that you can add to the local governments in the water area is just being this convener, being a can continue to be a safe place for uh, different water utility people to get together. And, uh, you know, I, I've noticed it in my time in this position that I think the people are a little bit more defensive. I think when this relationship started with the TAC and MOSAC 
and it appears to be uh, moving in a, in a more healthy direction. So I, I'm personally um, hopeful that the work program going forward kind of respects that, you know, it respects the, the past where we came from, but um, also kind of leverages this role that the Met Council can have, just frankly, as a convener. Committee Member Wang, you have your hand up. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, again, you, you guys can hear me, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So, I, I agree with um, what, um, what was stated before, and I think that the real key piece here is that, you know, in many cases, having um, communications or having um, coordination with other groups may have more greater beneficial um, impacts. So, for example, like the chloride, you know, challenge, right? We talk about that as an issue for water supply, but this, the root cause doesn't start with water supply. It starts with other things. It starts with your know, road maintenance. It starts with maybe like homeowners having, you know, you know, challenges with their water, or maybe starts with people wanting to do gardening or things like that. So having those connections to other working groups that may have some um, influence or impact in those issues can help us, and it's a two-way street. So I believe that, um, you know, involvement and coordination with those other groups can have a much more powerful impact across all the work that we do together. Great Landry, point. you had a comment? Yes, uh, you sparked a thought that I want to bounce off the group. Uh, this proposed meeting schedule and topics is focused specifically on your committee's meetings. But in the past, we have had joint meetings with the land use advisory group, or if not a meeting, we've taken water supply information that's been presented to Mossack and shared it with LUAC and had this similar conversation. Um, we've, I've talked with some of the other advisory committee staff here at the council about, you know, opportunities for sharing information with transportation or, you know, we have different groups. Um, might there may be some opportunities for some shared topic exploration and would there be appetite in this committee or the you committee members in just being made aware of or attending you know presentations in other committees to hear what that reaction and their perspectives are because we can add that to this work plan as you know ad hoc informational meetings as appropriate Does that make sense? So I do not see any hands raised at this time. But Mike um, put a comment in I, the chat. Perhaps you, so you could put your comment into words, Mike? Sure. It, so let me just uh, hop on video here. So I think that you know, the thought was is that you know, as, as I was kind of thinking through the things that originate challenges and that may have other groups associated with them, uh, for example, like agriculture is, you know, nitrates and ammonium are used for like as fertilizer and things like that. Where does that go? It goes into our water supply, but we don't control what happens on the agricultural side. We have to deal with it. But having, you know, discussions over like what strategies are in terms of things get to help benefit our agricultural community, but at the same token also help our water supply too. Um, likewise, you know, like um, we look at um, lakes and rivers and watershed areas where we have, for example, problems with milfoil. So people get rid of milfoil, but they need to use other chemicals or, you know, things that enter, again, the water supply to get rid of these things or invasive species of animals, right? Like carp, for example. Um, you know, and transportation is another one that we just talked about is the one of the most obvious ones. But I think that, you know, some of, some of the challenges we deal with with having a good water supply are things that are part of this much larger picture. So trying to fix the problem by just saying we're just going to find more sources of water isn't necessarily the long term, isn't necessarily a good long term strategy in and of itself. We have to plant the seeds to say, how do we as a as a larger community looking across these different sectors, the sectors that we artificially create as, as humans, right? Say, how do we make sure that we're doing the right things to have a good water supply, to have roads that are safe, to have um, lakes that are free of uh, pesticides or invasive species and make sure that we're also farming efficiently and, you know, generating the crop yields that we're expecting, right? So 
you know, how do we look across these different boundaries to make sure that the solutions we're, that we're working on all work together so a great solution for agriculture doesn't end up resulting in something that's bad for us or vice versa. And that's where I was kind of going with that in, in terms of just throwing out there some potential different areas where there may be overlap because watershed or, and, you know, or water supply um, very much overlap, for example, or, you know, agriculture and water supply overlap, right? You know, like my wife grew up in Slayton, Minnesota, and one of the challenges that you hear about in those communities, those rural communities, is that, you know, like, wow, there's like a lot of people got cancer this year, right? And then a lot of people kind of can attribute that to, yeah, you know, it's all the pesticides in the water and things like that. Well, you know, it's like, that's kind of scary. You know, you think about it, it's like, you know, you spend a lifetime exposed to that water. What does that mean in terms of your healthcare costs, in terms of your quality of life, your life expectancy? You know, that's a lot of questions that get raised, that become raised by that, that could we be better doing, making better decisions about what we're doing while also benefiting our communities? Thank you for that so I just, question. <laughs> I'm sorry? No, thank you. You're, as we think about this Metropolitan Development Guide and the broader council policy and planning, I mean, the way that you outlaid that, you laid out those connections, I think really fits in with that sort of bigger picture framework. I mean, yeah, I mean, you think if you, if we think about it from the perspective of, if we have a good water supply policy that also helps reduce healthcare costs and reduce like incidents of cancer, well, that's a huge win for everybody. Right, especially we can make sure that it's not costly. It's and it's not impacting um, the economics of what we do. Wow, that would be a huge win, right? Or if we had something that impacts the ability to, um, you know, helping our our lake shores be, you know, cleaner, right? That's a great win for all of us. Yeah. So how can we? I think it's just it's just us thinking outside of our normal box. So, Madam Chair, if I could. Yes. This is Susan, the recording secretary. I just want to remind all of our committee members that the chat uh, should, because we are recording this live stream and we're live streaming, the chat should be reserved for those who have technical difficulties. So, if you do have comments, please raise your hand. We will call on you uh, rather than posting it in the chat because those who are watching the live stream may or may not be able to see the chat. Time and this is this is Wendy again. If you if you either can't raise your hand because you're on the phone or uh, it doesn't get acknowledged and there's some silence, feel free to just pipe in and ask for recognition where we can be pretty informal. Yes. Um, so anybody else Thank have you. comments or questions? At this time, I do not see any other hands raised. And Lania, to acknowledge we have uh, about six minutes left in this segment. Thank you all for letting me egg you on. I really appreciate <laughs> that, that it's exactly this kind of discussion that really me, I know Emily, Ali, the rest of our staff listen very deeply to and it shapes how we approach the work that we do. So thank you for that. Um, if there are no other questions right now, I wanted to move on to a very short little demo to share with you a potential tool that will help us do the work at these next meetings. And so, Greg, thank you so much for keeping on top of all these presentations. This would be the presentation about an online tool. Um, so if we can just go to the next slide. Uh, one tool that we have started to use in environmental services, and we're working on trying to expand for use throughout the rest of the council, is called Mural. Because I know in this remote environment uh, that one of the things I miss the most is a whiteboard. And I know at least some of you might be in the same boat. But uh, we had gone to so much trouble to really change how we ran our committee meetings so that they were more interactive and small group discussion and 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 sort of co-creative, right? We were sharing ideas. And that gets to be a little more challenging sometimes with these online meetings. So 
I wanted to share this potential tool with you and um, propose that we may use it at future meetings. And the slide is just what this website would look like. And I created a tutorial and I have a link that I am going to send out after, uh, after the meeting, we'll include it in the notes so that you can explore this yourself. Um, but I'm going to actually share my screen and show you what this looks like live. And then when I send the link, you're gonna be able to go in and muck around in it just to push buttons, add things, delete things. There's no right or wrong answers. It's just purely experimental, but just to see if this might work for us. So I'm gonna do my best to share content. Thank you for stalling everybody. All right, quick question. Do you guys all see a big creepy looking black screen with a pink box that says enter as visitor. I see Wendy's nodding. Yeah. So yeah. when I when I send this link to you for mural, this is what will this is should be what comes up. And so you can enter as just a anonymized animal or, or um, include your name and your email if you'd like. Uh, so it'll give you a little bit of prompting, you know, tips, explore or not as you choose. Um, but the document that I created, oh, adjust your zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you click on the board and drag it, you can move it around. If you have a roller ball on your mouse and you uh, roll in and out, you can zoom and roll out. Um, one of the things that I find the most useful is opening up the outline icon. So along the top, there are some different interaction options, including this outline. It should open with the outline for you. So I did create this outline with some instructions. So you can explore the board. And just, I would advise you to just click on all the buttons and see what happens. You can't wreck this. Um, or there are some specific challenges. So I would ask that you experiment with opening the element panel, which is off to the left, and explore what different things you can add. So there's an option to add post-its and you can resize them and type text. Um, we can add just plain text. And it's not quite like Word, so it's an experiment and play around. There's also the option to add icons. So you can just type in the subject you're interested in and bring in an icon, resize it. There's different frameworks if you wanted to organize a board. And you can also do an image search and add those. So this is the, I'll get rid of these. Delete, your right click is a nice option. You can bring things to the front, move them to the back. Um, this might be something that we use. We can all participate in it and add, so it's a good brainstorming tool. Uh, it might also be something that we can use with breakout sessions where each group is assigned a different assignment and we can work on that and then come back together as a group. So I wanted to just share options like this as a potential tool that we could leverage and get your reactions for whether you think something like this you think could be a value or also if given your internet connection or your the, the way that you're interacting at these meetings if this would just be something you would not be able to do so um that was something i just wanted to bounce off of you and get your reactions to. There are other tools as well that we could explore. So far, this one seems to be, uh, because we're starting to support it in ES and it's fairly flexible, this is my preference at the moment, but I'm always open to learning something new. And with that, <laughs> um, 
Um, so has anybody here used Bureau besides Lanya? Got the thumbs up from Mike okay. and from Annika. Anybody have comments or questions from what you've seen so far? Madam Chair, this is Susan. Mm -hmm. So as Lanya had mentioned, we have used this within environmental services. Um, one concern that I have is with the breakout sessions and the compatibility with the live streaming. Yeah. We would have to investigate that as an option. That's a good point. And I completely recognize, right? We wanna be transparent. This is a public meeting. So if some of this technology doesn't work for that, that's fine. We'll get creative and find other ways. Um, for those of you who have used Mural, if you, has it worked or has there been a, has it been a struggle? Are there any lessons learned you'd be willing to share? Uh, we recently used it in Minneapolis just for some exact kind of functions as this breakout sessions with big groups. And it very much is like you're working in a conference room together with a big whiteboard and post-it notes. So I found it um, a very useful, useful software, useful tool for this type of collaboration and group meeting, so. Yeah, I've used it uh, professionally as well in multiple different forums and um, and also for uh, training sessions I attended too. So it's been a, it's a fantastic tool. Um, there's a, you know, a lot of similar tools in that space, but this is a fantastic tool. It does a great job. Um, it, um, everyone who I've, everyone who's used it has seemed to pick it, fix it up really quickly. It's very seamless in terms of the experience. So as you know, something where there's, a, they would say it's like a low friction kind of thing. You can just jump right in and use what you know and just start using it and then contribute pretty immediately using the tools in a very simple manner and just start organically, you know, growing what you need to know as you start using it. So um, it's, a, you know, it's a great tool for collaboration and for sharing ideas and kind of simulating that whiteboard when people are in different places. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, Madam Chair, this is Susan again. I'd like to acknowledge that was Committee Member Bankston and Committee Member Wang. Thank you. Is there anybody else that has questions or comments? Madam Chair, Phil Klein. Go ahead, Phil. I guess uh, with the whiteboard and everything, uh, are we intending to just do virtual meetings from now on, or are we going to actually try to meet in person? That, that remains subject to the governor's order. So we don't know when that when the in-person meetings will be able to start again. This would be something to use until then, but yeah, eventually I would assume we will meet together in person again. Okay, no, that's fine, that's all I have. Anyone else? Lanya, you have your hand raised? Uh, yes. I. I did want to acknowledge that if we do use Mural, I, I understand that some of you would attend a virtual meeting perhaps just on your phone and may not have access to Mural. And so if we were to do it, we would always work to provide alternative ways to contribute the same information. Um, I'm very cognizant that not everybody has the same access to the same resources. And so we do need to uh, always have sort of a backup or alternative options. So uh, allowing people to contribute in other ways, but also reading the information out loud so people who are listening know what's been posted. Is that what you're suggesting, Lanya? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? I do not see any other hands raised at this time. Okay. Well, if you think of anything, you can always email Lanya um, or speak up before the end of the meeting and otherwise we would be going on to the update from Ali. I see. Shush. Madam Chair, I just wanted to acknowledge Lanya did post the link to the um, to the tool 
in the chat. We'll make sure that we capture that for the minutes as well. Yes, and you can copy and paste it right now. And I, I already did that into my browser for, for later so yep. that I can look at it. Yep. But yes, you will, you will get it again if you don't capture it now. Ali, are you ready to do your presentation? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. Thanks, committee, committee members. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Ali El Hassan. I'm the manager of water supply planning for the Metropolitan Council. Uh, thank you for taking time today to meet with us. Uh, and, and again, you know, this year is going to be very busy. Um, as all of you know, now we are in the uh, middle of the uh, legislative session for 2021. And this is a, uh, a very important legislative session for us because this is a budget year. So we'll get to where that's when we get our funding, uh, mainly from Clean Water Fund for the activities of the water supply planning. Next slide, please. Um, I just wanted to make sure that more SAC members are aware of uh, some change that happened last year, 2020. Uh, the governor office uh, has introduced a new process to appoint MOSAC members. That's different than the past. And if you have been a member for MOSAC for many years, uh, this is a new process. This is going through the Secretary of State's open appointments process. Uh, members are requested, interested members or interested candidates are requested to fill out an application through, through the SOS uh, website, uh, and I think that you have a link for that here. Uh, that process is very easy, and 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 I think uh, one of the members, I think the first member that uh, the process went through this process is Valerie Grover from uh, Dakota County, and and I'm, I'm I think just my understanding from the process, it's a very easy application. It doesn't take a long time to apply through the SOS uh, website. And then uh, I will work uh, with any members or any uh, candidate who is interested in, uh, in being reappointed or appointed uh, to go through the process and, and provide what's needed from, from them to prepare so that they can apply. Um, I'm not sure if Valerie, if you have any comments about the process, just to make sure that the rest of the members know about it, if you have any concerns or any comments about it, um, is Grover? Hi, Ali. Yeah, um, I feel like this happened a while ago, <laughs> um, but from what I remember the process, it was pretty simple. Um, just, you know, resume process. And then um, I actually got a phone call uh, from the governor's office. Uh, let me know when it was accepted and when it would be posted um, official. So the application process itself is, is, is really easy. It doesn't require a lot of effort. So hopefully um, we will coach anyone uh, who is con in, whose time is, is uh, you know, his terms or her terms ended and who they are trying to reapply or if there is new members who are trying to apply, uh, we'll coach them through the process and uh, we'll clearly uh, communicate what's our requirements uh, for the application. Right now, we're working to fill six positions that became um, uh, vacant as a result of term uh, uh, terms ended for some of the members. And we are going to have this process in the next couple of weeks, as I understand, talking to the uh, our government affairs staff. Any questions? Ali, just to clarify, I pulled up the website and searched for water supply and it came up and it says no open positions right now. Um, are you saying that they're going to be open in the next couple of weeks? Um, Madam Chair, that website, they didn't, they didn't uh, um, update it for a while now. They didn't include what's opening for us, but they communicated with us that we have six positions that their term end, terms ended and they wanted us to contact members ahead of time to make them aware of that. We started this process of contacting all the members. And um, as soon as the, the governor office put that uh, on, you know, make sure that this is declared as open positions, the SOS will update the website and will have it as vacants for some of these positions. But as of now, I understand it's not, it's not updated. 
And can people apply before it says open or do they have to wait until that those positions They have are to posted? wait until it's open, Madam Chair. Thank and you. I will let I will let the current members aware of that and will I will make an um, announcement um, about the openings in the um, in all the council uh, means of communication. Thank you. Are there other questions? I Next do not see slide. any hands raised at this time. Next slide, please. So talking about the legislative updates, uh, the Met Council have uh, requested funding from the Clean Water Fund uh, early last year. The process started last year and, and, and I came in front of MOSAC and TAC last year asking for support uh, for our request for the funding for the two programs that we run in the council using the Clean Water Fund. The first one is the Water Demand Reduction Efficiency Grant Program and the Metropolitan Area Water Supply Sustainability Support Program. Uh, the funding from last year, uh, we the process was having uh, some, uh, we, again, as we are going through the COVID and the responses from the state, the projection of funding available for Clean Water Fund, we have to adjust our request uh, several times. Uh, early on, we have to reduce our request because there was an anticipated shortage in the funding. Uh, luckily, as the as the projection for February of this year became became that the state will have a surplus, uh, it became very clear that the Clean Water Fund will have a surplus also, and that's why we uh, we requested more funding for the Water Demand Reduction Efficiency Grant Program. Uh, uh, the reason for that is last year uh, or last biennium we received seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for this pro for this program. And the requests from the communities uh, were at 1.4 million. Uh, so we were only able to meet half of the request of last year from the communities. We tried to give all the communities who applied some part of you know, funding, but they didn't get the entire amount of funding that they requested. We have to, uh, to portion the amount of funding based on, on what's available for us. So that's the reason that this program is very popular in the communities. There is a lot of demand. Actually, right now I have two or three communities who are asking for, they went through their funding, they want more funding. And so that's why I think we added another $1 million to the, it's in, in this slide saying 2 million. And now our request because of the uh, new good news about the uh, surplus of funding. We are asking for $3 million. Uh, a lot of that money is going to the uh, most of, we have a big increase for the water demand reduction uh, grant program. Um, again, you know, we were, uh, the, the, the COVID-19 uh, has impacted the spending of the Clean Water Fund, has impacted the tax revenue. That's the mainstream for funding for the Clean Water Fund. Uh, this process is still dynamic. There is a couple of bills in the House uh, that have uh, made some change to the clean water funding request that provided by the agencies, uh, but we don't know where is the final, uh, the final uh, amount of money. Uh, we don't know that yet because nothing is approved so far. So with that, I would really uh, hope that if we know anything and we need support from you, uh, we count on you. Uh, you have provided us support, all the, all the members of MOSAC and TAC in the past, and we are counting on you again if, if there is any uh, thing that we really need to, uh, to need your support to provide during this legislative session. Uh, with that, I can take any questions, Madam Chair. Are there any questions? At this time, committee member Wang has his hand raised. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, quick question. Um, do we have any sense of what was requested from the last biennium since we're in the second half of the biennium? Or what so, may have been in the budget, I suppose? We're in the first half of the biennium. Or they said the first half. Biennium. <laughs> Wait, sorry, I always got the, yeah. So 
because we're because this year was because last year we did all the budgeting, but this year we we're, we're there's no major funding request coming through because you know this is the the other year, right? No, it's not. It's the budget year this year. Madam Chair, if I can explain, go ahead, this is Ali. The budget year. This is the budget year, uh, as okay. Madam Chair mentioned. Uh, this is where we submit our request, but the process for that starts last year. The agencies put together all their requests, and it goes through a lot of refinement processes until it reaches the governor office in October of last year. And that's where they call it the governor uh, funding at that time. Uh, when, the, when we put together the request from all the agencies, we rely on projection from Minnesota Management and Budget Office, where they gave us projection for uh, tax revenues and all of the funding that uh, will be available. And that's how we put our, to, our, our funding request together. At that time, when we did that last year, uh, there was an anticipated shortage. And that's why we requested about $2 million, which was less about, uh, less about $750,000 from what we usually request for, from, for our funding. Uh, now, because we know that there is more funding available based on the new projection of uh, of February of this year, the governor office revised their state budget, including the clean water fund budget. And that's where we saw resubmitted our request with additional funding for the grant program, especially for us, the Met Council. Did this answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you very much. Lanya, you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to add, if anybody is interested, this is a plug for the most recent water supply report to the legislature. On page 18, there is a summary of the history of the council's clean water fund appropriations uh, from state fiscal year 2010 through state fiscal year 2021. So if you're at all interested in knowing how that's fluctuated over time, uh, that's on page 18 and I can share the link. The link in the chat, that would be fantastic. Are there other questions, comments? Madam Chair, just a, a comment about the Clean Water Fund. Uh, the Clean Water Fund is the main source of funding for these two programs that serve all the communities in the metro area. Uh, as example of that project in West Metro, if we really need uh, some technical support, that's the funding for that collaborative effort is going to come from the Clean Water Fund. Uh, North East, uh, Northwest Metro has done a study of evaluation of alternative water supplies recently, and the source of funding for those communities was the Clean Water Fund. And a big, big part of this funding is going to the Water Demand Reduction Efficiency Grant Program, where it's a path through, it's 100% path through grant program. The Met Council doesn't charge any funding even for administrating this, uh, this grant program. And so uh, that's 100% uh, path through. So these are some of the programs that really provide benefit to the communities in the metro area. And we really rely on the support of the communities uh, to get this funding and to keep it continuing until the end of the Clean Water Fund in 2034. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ali. Yes, it, it, it's a, a huge benefit to the region because the Met Council doesn't have its own funding for water supply. We have to rely on the legislature to provide that money else, or else we can't help the region on water supply issues because our tax levies and funding are all very uh, siloed in different areas and, and we don't have a, a funding source for water supply besides the legislature. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Madam Chair, this is yes. Susan. Just wanted to let everyone know that Lanya has posted the link to the report on the 2005 to 2020 water supply planning activities that is in the chat and we will make sure we pull it into the notes for today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. With that, we move on to next steps, which are scheduled committee meetings and support for filling vacancies. 
hearing a bell ringing. That's my poor dog wanting me to let her out. <laughs> but uh, um, we really already talked about those things um, in the other agenda items. Staff, is there more things about that that we need to cover now? This is Lanya. I, I don't think there's anything added unless committee members heard something that they would that they would like to add as a next step. What, what I've heard is that council staff uh, will work to send out uh, re invitations for recurring committee meetings, that the dates we presented in the proposed work plan, I didn't hear any uh, issues with that. So expect a recurring meeting to show up on your calendar. Um, Ali talked about reaching out to uh, committee members about uh, applying or reapplying using the state's website and process. Um, I did hear, and we talked about uh, shaping the design for those upcoming committee meetings. And, and so uh, staff may be reaching out for some guidance information. Uh, that might be one-on-one -on -one phone call, but it may also be that we uh, send out a survey or an information about an upcoming um, meeting of interest, just informational that you might be interested in. So. Uh, just wanted to let you know that there may be some information coming to you between meetings. And I just wanted to have a quick check in. If there's anything I'm missing, uh, we can make sure we add that to our to do list. And if there's anything that committee members think of between now and then, they can always contact you by email or phone or whatever Absolutely. and let you know. Okay, um, if nobody else has any comments, is there anything that you need us to change for the next meeting that's not that didn't work for you on this one? We're always looking for continuous improvement. I do not see any hands raised at this time. Okay, then I will assume that everybody is content for the moment. Uh, Lanya, did you have anything else before we, we adjourn? Other than to say thank you all for your thoughtful uh, response to the work plan. And I heard a lot of enthusiasm and I'm really looking forward to a, a busy but very fruitful year. Thank you all. Yes, thank you everybody. Um, you get an extra seven minutes for your day now because we were efficient. Um, thank you all for your participation and don't hesitate to email Lanya or Emily if you think of things between now and then. Thanks. With no further business to come before us, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>